Hello and welcome to part 3 on my series of programming an AI player for my new game Shattered Throne. I'm joined today by my son Bennett. Hello, I'm Bennett. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to ask you a question about this map. What are we, I mean, what's with all these color things everywhere? What no. is that? Well, the colors are actually the influence map. So the red side says that this is what the computer thinks is its strongest area for red, and blue means that blue thinks that's where the area is strongest for the influence, the strength of their units is the strongest. Now, this particular case, the red player is the only one that is actually using this information. The blue player is the same player from last time, um, and it just kind of moves more randomly. So, sort of like medium versus beginner, and the blue's beginning. Yeah, sort of, except that it's more like the blue player isn't quite as smart. And in this case, you can see that the red player is actually moving forward, where the blue player is just kind of clumping up near its beginning area. Yeah. I th Wait, no, I think the red player is offensive and the blue one's being defensive. That's certainly one thing. That would make sense. Except, by the way it's looking right now and how it's going, I'm... It looks like the red player is going to win, and also because the red has an advantage because there's more houses that, and the houses are more close. So then if you just get a squire, you'll, you'll move around easily. True. Looks like that. But you can definitely see that the red player has a tendency, I almost call it rolling downhill, whereas if you think of um, the areas where there's no blue or red, that is the downhill, the red player has a tendency to move towards the areas in the middle, the kind of the valleys. Yeah, it's not really paying attention. Yeah, no one's really paying attention to the bottom area. like it needs to get more units and just like put them a bunch sort of like preparing to launch a huge gigantic wave and then so then after there's lots of units it'll just launch all that to break the blue player's defense barrier thingy yeah it's because it's just launching unit by unit by unit and then it's just getting destroyed each time yeah, it's still kind of keeping like a, a small layer in the middle that it's kind of keeping a clump together, which is good. But you're right, it does it is stranding units out too far into the enemy area, and they're easily picked off. Yeah. So we're not quite at the point where we have a very valid computer player just yet. Mm -hmm, but so far, it looks like Red's, uh, I mean, is the offensive version, and that Red's probably going to win. So I think we've definitely made progress. I mean, I think red is definitely a step forward from blue. Um, and it gives a good springboard for um, what we're going to be looking at in the following segments. Yeah. The blue player, player is just trying to defend against red attacks, but after it got its squire, red's finally starting to win. Mm -hmm. and red definitely has the economic advantage at this point, where it's just kind of pushing through just by weight, sheer weight of numbers, of having enough money to constantly spend on a stream of troops. Yeah, see, that's because, yeah, that the reason he gets more money is because of the house advantage. I mean, the blue pe player only has, I think, two houses. But you definitely see that the the red player is clumping up here in the middle, and just kind of moving forward, at a nice body of troops. It's definitely a behavior we didn't we don't see in the blue player at all. Mm -hmm. The blue player is basically just like scrambling everywhere. All right, well, um, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, tune in later for uh to see how this AI progresses, and if you're interested in what the code looks like in both this version and the previous versions, give it a check out at my dev blog at www.checkmarkgames.com, and have a good one. Goodbye.